I've kind of ecked in a routine and I just want to like lay it on you. Like this is, so my day looks like I wake up, I've never been a breakfast person. I remember the slogan and everyone's saying you got to have this, but I, I'm okay to skip breakfast. And again, my go-to nows are pu'er tea, which is like a fermented Chinese tea that looks purple and smells like fish heads, but you kind of get to, <laughs> you kind of like it after a while. There's no calories. English tea I've gotten used to. And what I do is I go until about one o'clock, two o'clock, and then I go train and I do about a, an hour of hard anaerobic cardio. And then I get back and I finally order my meal, which is usually protein and some vegetables. And I eat around four or 4.30 every day. And yeah. I've worked that routine in before I read your book, by the way. And um, it's something I can sustain for a long period of time. And if I keep that up, I feel really good. It's only on the weekends where I have an opportunity to mess that up that I, I, I start feeling bad and I start making poor choices. Um, I got the oral ring on, so I'm tracking everything, including my sleep and activity and I'm watching myself, usually my sleep, I'm just trying to get dialed in. And then I'm taking the cold showers and I'm doing breathing exercises to jack up my, I guess it's sympathetic or nervous system or something. And um, this is kind of like my life. And then I try to broadcast like a madman and teach in my academy. <laughs> So that's like my life and I get a lot from it. I can sustain it. Um, in my 20s, I was drinking and smoking and doing drugs and it took me another couple decades and I've now stopped doing all of those things. And I've dialed it into where I feel like I can do this for a long time, um, David. So I know you're not my doctor, but I was wondering <laughs> what you think of that. If you have any suggestions and anything you note there as being helpful or good or something worth changing. Yeah. Well, first of all, um, congratulations. Good, good for you. Everything I heard is, is on the right path. Um, your skin looks great. Uh, so I, what are you doing? Keep doing that. Uh, what I didn't hear was, are you taking vitamins, supplements and moving? Are you exercising? What, how, how are you doing in those areas? Yeah. So, um, I do an hour a day of some type of hard cardio. So I just came back from swimming where my instructor made me do yeah, 12 relay laps with the butterfly stroke. So I'm breathing heavy that or I'm break dancing or I'm one of these things. I stopped taking supplements about a year ago after trying all of them because they weren't making my stomach feel very good. And I just thought, you know what? I'm just gonna not do them. So I don't, I mean, I have MCT oil with my meals and stuff, but I don't go out of my way to take supplements. And I haven't tried any of the things in, in some of your 12 plus companies as well. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, well, so my, my 12 plus companies, just to clarify, most of them are pharmaceutical companies. I don't sell supplements, even though people put my name and face all over the internet. Uh, there are some drugs on the market uh, that you can get through doctors that are thought to slow aging. One is the drug called metformin, which I take. Uh, and I don't have type two diabetes or high blood sugar, uh, but I take it because looking at tens of thousands of people who take metformin for their diabetes, they actually on average live longer than people who don't have type 2 diabetes. And so I, I do that. Um, I also take a number of supplements. I take a symphony of supplements actually that I've learned through testing my blood mainly, uh, but also wearing devices, what works for me and, and, uh, and what doesn't. Uh, exercise is important. I don't exercise enough. It sounds like you're doing all the right things. You want to have at least 10 minutes a day of losing your breath, whether it's you know, exercise in bed with someone you love or just walking uh, quickly, running. A little bit goes a long way. A new study just came out a couple of weeks ago that shows just five minutes a few times a week will separate you from the pack who doesn't exercise at all and lower your rate of getting heart disease um, and uh, even dementia by a whopping 30 to 40 percent. So a little bit goes a long way. So I, I applaud what you're doing. Um, in terms of food, uh, often people say, well, should I just eat meat? Should I eat plants? What I like to, to focus on are uh, fresh uh, fruits and vegetables. The reason for that is that plants contain a couple of really important components. One is it's a ratio of amino acids that turns on longevity protective genes. And particularly that you want uh, foods that are low in branch chain amino acids, such as leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Uh, and plants tend to have that more than meat. And the other thing that plants have that meat doesn't have 
are chemicals uh, that sometimes you can buy as supplements that actually turn on longevity genes without having to be hungry or exercise or can supplement those activities. And so I do both. I, I eat plants that have these chemicals and I also uh, take them as supplements. And uh, some of those go by the names of resveratrol, quercetin, physetin. They're outlined in, in my book, Lifespan. And uh, what I think is going on, if you're wondering why do plants make these molecules is just a happy coincidence, I think not. When our food supply is stressed, we need to know that. And we've evolved to sense the chemical cues in our food supply. So for instance, resveratrol, which is in found in, is found in grapes and in red wine, goes up dramatically when the plants don't get enough water. Um, oleic acid, which is in olive oil, goes up dramatically when the olive trees are not watered or they don't get enough nutrients. So the plant world can also supplement, uh, literally supplement what we do in our daily lives, which it should include exercise and eating less often. You mentioned stress and you talk about it a lot in your book. And I, I remember taking um, tours of vineyards in, in uh, Italy and Tuscany. And I remember going on a specific tour where it had gone from like a, a table wine producing vineyard to like a fine wine producing vineyard. And the head guy was saying, it's because we stress the vines. When we stress the vines, we get the best wine. And I was just, the first thing I came to me, and you just mentioned it now, do you see this parallel in nature? We do. So the hypothesis that I came up with, with Conrad Howitz, uh, another doctor in the US, is called xenohormesis. And when plants are stressed, they make these polyphenols, they're called, and there's, there's dozens of them that are in our food supply, that in my research I've shown activate the sirtuins, which are these longevity uh, regulators in our body, which come on when we're hungry and when we exercise. So when plants are stressed, they make these polyphenols, but they also make a lot of flavor and color. And that's why if you have a lot of flavor and color in your food, it's a good bet that you're getting also these healthy longevity promoting molecules. You also mentioned in the book that we can focus on cancer and a few other like, you know, death ailments, but if we just cure those, you were saying we actually only add on average like one to two years of life back to people which is it's really counterintuitive because most people think of those as the things that kill everybody or hurt everybody or hurt society in large. But, but you argue it's actually this lack of longevity. Can you just speak on that? Well, the first thing to realize is that aging is the root cause of all of these diseases. And if we can slow down and reverse aging, we, I believe they go away. Okay. We're working on a cure for Alzheimer's by reversing the age of the brain, which we can do easily in mice now. They get their ability to learn. So that's the important first bit of knowledge. The other is that um, modern medicine, as, as we call it, uh, is part of uh, what, instead of calling it healthcare, I call it sick care, because what, what we're doing is sticking Band-Aids on the end products of aging. Okay, And uh, imagine that we're constantly getting cuts and we go into the doctor and they stick a Band-Aid on there. Medicine is basically putting Band-Aids on aging, but we're constantly getting cuts. And the doctor will put a, a Band-Aid on the cut and say, go home. And we get another cut and another cut and another cut. And then it's exponential. We're getting more and more cuts all the time. And the older we get, the more cuts. And eventually you, you, you're going to run out of Band-Aids, which is what eventually kills us. And it's the reason why medicines typically don't help us live longer than another couple of years because by preventing cancer, it doesn't stop all the other things that are happening with aging. To really live a long time, to live another 20, 30, eventually 50 years longer than today's lifespan, we have to get at the root cause, which is the aging process itself. And that's why it baffles me that more people aren't talking about or working on this problem. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. 
It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money, despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.